Hi, in this second video we are going to look at the uh, continuation of the Always On Availability Group video and how to configure and set up Always On. In the first video we covered some of the basics regarding Always On and how th it has certain benefits or advantages that you don't have with other high availability solutions within Microsoft. So in this video let's go ahead and configure an Always On Availability Group. As you can see, to simulate this environment, I've gone ahead and installed VMware Workstation 9 and I've already gone ahead and configured the failover cluster. So I've got a domain controller and I've got node 1 and node 2. And on these nodes, I've configured the uh, failover cluster as well as installed SQL Server as a standalone instance. Now that I've done this, I have the prerequisites or the basic foundation to go ahead and configure an always on availability group. The first thing that you'll need to do as part of enabling or working with Always On is that you need to come into the SQL Server Configuration Manager and then right click the Database Engine Service, go to Properties and under Properties you'll have Always On High Availability, the tab on the top. When you click on, click on it, you'll see that uh, it automatically detects that this particular instance of SQL Server belongs to a failover cluster and identifies the name of the failover cluster and displays it here. At this point, all you need to do is go ahead and check the box that says Enable Always On Availability Groups and then press OK. Now that you've done that, you should be able to go ahead and create Always On Availability Groups within these folders that you see here. So let's go ahead and do that right now. As you can see, I've got a MadWorks database within Node 2 and I don't have it within Node 1. So the idea here is to go ahead and set up an Always On Availability Group and then have the same copy of the MadWorks database listed here as well. So the first thing that I need to do is right click on Always On High Availability and then select New Availability Group Wizard. This is a very useful way of going ahead and configuring Always On Availability Groups because it gives you a very clear cut interface to work with. I'll go ahead and specify the Always On Availability Group as having the name AG1. Now the idea here is that while failover clustering does go ahead and provide you with the ability to do instance level failover, the availability group in itself gives you the database level failover. Now the idea with the group is that you can consolidate or you can group together databases that are related to each other. Say for example, the server contains a database for both HR as well as finance and you need to make sure that the finance application fails over with all its relevant databases together. In this case, you would create an availability group, something like availability group finance or availability group HR. So at this point, I just have one database, MadWorks, so I'm just going to go ahead and select it and then make it part of the availability group. You'll see that it meets the prerequisites. Now, the idea here is that there are certain prerequisites that the database needs to meet. Uh, the main thing is that the database should be in full recovery mode and that the database should already have one full backup taken before you configure always on availability groups. So I meet those prerequisites, so I'm just going to check it and press next. And at this point, I get the most important screen as far as Always On Availability Group is concerned. Here you can see that I'm already configuring everything on Node 2. So my Node 2 is my primary, and it will support automatic failover with up to two replicas, this being the first one, and Node 1 being the second one. As soon as I check the box for automatic failover, you'll see that the checkbox for synchronous commit is also checked by default. The idea being that in order to go ahead and failover automatically, it needs to be perfectly in sync as well. You'll see that while I can only failover automatically between two replicas, I can go ahead and commit synchronously up to three replicas. The idea being that even though the third node may not failover automatically, it will still contain up-to-date perfect data that can be used for offloaded business reporting, database consistency checks, backups, etc. The next thing you'll notice here is that there is something called readable secondary. As you can see, node 2 is my secondary and I need the ability to go ahead and read data out of the secondary so that I can offload non-mission critical database activities like reporting, etc. In order to do that, I'll go ahead and configure this as readable secondary is equal to yes. Now that I've configured this, the next thing I want to do is look at my endpoints. Just like how you have database endpoints and mirroring endpoints, you now have endpoints within Always On Availability Group as well. You need to make sure that you capture this particular port number because you need to enable firewall rules, etc. This endpoint basically allows you to connect directly to Node 2 and Node 1. However, that's not really what we want to do, so uh, we'll go ahead and configure a listener later on. 
The next screen that you'll be interested in is the backup preferences. Now in this particular screen what we're trying to do is we're co trying to configure on which particular instance or replica the backups would be taken. The idea being that we want to offload as many of these non-critical processes to other servers or other instances and let the, uh, the mission critical environment run without any other additional resource utilization. So for that purposes I'm going to go ahead and leave prefer secondary which means that if a secondary is available that's definitely from where the backups are going to go ahead and be taken. However if there is no secondary then it will go ahead and take it up from the primary as well. Additionally I also have the option of going ahead and making sure that backups only happen from secondaries or only from the primary or I can even set the limit about on what percentage or how, what priority the backups are taken from each of the instances. So let me go ahead and leave this at prefer secondary for the moment. And then the last thing I want to do is configure a listener. Now a listener is somewhat similar to a cluster name or a cluster IP. While the underlying servers may be active or passive, primary or secondary, the cluster IP or the, uh, the listener here is what will redirect connections depending on the nature of the activity that you're trying to perform. Say for example, if you're trying to do a read operation or write operation, you may possibly connect either to a primary or a secondary. And that's directed or uh, configured via the listener that you have here. So let me go ahead and just configure a listener name here. I'm giving it a default port of uh, 2001. And I'm just going to use DHCP for the moment and then press next. At this point, it's basically saying that do you want to use the listed endpoints? I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. The next thing that you want to do is uh, you've configured the always on availability group as such, but you need to also configure the synchronization process. In order to do this, I've created a network share on node 2 server, which is called ABCD. In this folder, it'll go ahead and dump the log backups and its other backups that are required to create the MadWorks database on node 1 as well. So let's leave it as it is right now and then press next. And as you can see at this point, it's going ahead and configuring or setting up the entire process for the always on availability group. The idea here is that by doing this process, it is now making sure that the prerequisites and the basic requirement for setting up always on is available. And once this is done, it'll actually start the process of creating the always on availability group. This particular screen does take some time, so you might want to just wait for a minute. And uh, when we come back, we will look at the, the remaining screens. So as you can see here, it's done with configuring the listener and stuff. So let's go ahead and press next. You get a summary of what's going on and then you press finish. At this point, it actually starts the entire process of creating the always on availability group. So a couple of things that need to happen here, we'll go ahead and do them quickly. So um, it's still going ahead and doing the restore operation for uh, MadWorks database on node 1. So uh, looks like it's done. We should technically be able to see MadWorks database show up here right now and it's in restoring state. Just give it a minute and it'll come online. There we go. So at this point MadWorks database is up and running. And you can see that it's not synchronizing yet. It's still in the process of making sure that everything works fine. And once that's done, the always on availability group is technically up and running. There we go. So you can see that uh, node 1 primary is up and running. And then you've got the node 2 here. Just a second. Let me refresh this. Okay, it's taking a moment. So let it just come up. And in the meantime, let's quickly explore some of these options here. So as you can see, the database I selected was the MadWorks database that's showing up here. And I've created a listener called Always On Availability Group Listener 1, AG1. And the replicas that are participating in my Always On Availability Group are the two nodes that uh, I've configured, Node 2 and Node 1. One of the good things about Always On Availability Groups is that there is a ready-made dashboard available so that you can view the health status of the database participating in always on so you can see here that in my case everything is good at the moment the availability group health is um, the status is healthy and the databases are synchronized on both node 1 and node 2 
with zero data loss. So at this point you can see that it's synchronized. So technically if you look here I've got a database and I've got a table and I've got an ID value here. If I simply go ahead and uh, insert another row here I should see it immediately well almost immediately I don't really have a very powerful system at the moment so it's going to take a moment to um, get the query window up and running but there we go So I've got no, I've got two there, and then you know I've got three. And basically, what happens here is similar to what you have in database mirroring, where you've got high safety mode. Correct. So this is all there is really to know about always on availability groups. You can see how simple and easy it is to configure, and uh, the user interface is very uh, friendly in terms of being able to set up the whole thing. And the concepts again mostly um, are taken from the replication, clustering, and mirroring technologies that was al already available so for any DBA who's already working with these technologies always on shouldn't be too much of a stretch in terms of grasping the concepts that go on behind it so this is all there is really to know about always on I hope you've enjoyed this video in the next video we will look at some of the additional concepts such as the uh, availability group listener and uh, how to do the failover itself I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching